welcome to the Paper Crafters Library. In part one of this Basics of Heat Embossing video, I'm going to talk to you about what heat embossing actually is, what it's used for, what kinds of surfaces you can heat emboss on, and then finally I'm going to give you an overview of what supplies you're going to need to get started heat embossing. Part two of the Basics of Heat Embossing video is going to show you how you actually heat emboss. First off, for those of you that are unfamiliar, let's talk about what heat embossing actually is. Now probably one of the most common and most recognized forms of heat embossing is the shiny raised lettering or images you often see in store-bought stationery. This beautiful raised effect is achieved by melting and fusing a special type of powder called embossing powder to create that dimensional or raised effect. And with a few basic materials, you can easily achieve this effect in your own projects. And here's an example of a card that we created using this heat embossing technique. The background, you can see it has this beautiful raised pearlescent finish, the outline on the label, as well as the stamped greeting that you see here. These were all heat embossed to give this nice shiny raised finish. What I love about heat embossing is that it's such an incredibly versatile technique that you can incorporate into a huge variety of different project types. And although people traditionally associate heat embossing with stamping, you can actually use it with or without stamps. So here I have a sampling of some of the projects onto which I've incorporated heat embossing. Here I've got some cards. Now all of these use stamping with heat embossing as a technique. Here in scrapbook pages, I've used heat embossing as a background to alter chipboard letters. Here's an example of using embossing to glitter up a chipboard shape. And then here's an example of embossing a metal brad to create a finish that coordinated with my page. Now you can use embossing and altered art in mixed media to create a resist background on your canvas to alter some of your uh, mixed media pieces. This is a real out-of-the-box way to use embossing. These memory glass frames, which look like they're soldered, the frame is actually created using embossing powder in a technique called faux soldering. And then finally, here in this art journal page, I've incorporated stamping to create the focal point of my page. Now as to what surfaces you can emboss on, pretty much anything you can think of. It just has to be able to withstand the high temperatures of your heat tool. And I'll talk about the heat tool in just a minute. So for example, you can emboss on cardstock and papers. You can emboss on vellum, which is this kind of special see-through type paper. You can emboss on acetates and acrylics. So like these transparencies here or these acrylic album pages. You can emboss on chipboard, images, sheets, whatever. You can emboss on wood pieces. You can emboss on cork. You can emboss on fabrics, on metals, things that are ceramic and things that are glass. So I think we've covered just about every surface I can possibly think of. Um, actually, I've tried it on fun foam as well. As I mentioned again, it just has to be able to withstand high temperatures. So if you have a surface and you're not really sure, then I recommend that before you try to incorporate it into your project, just take a little piece and test it to see if you can heat emboss on it. So let's start talking about what supplies you need. I'll give you an overview and then I'll talk a bit more about each one. Now the three must-have supplies for heat embossing are a heat tool, some form of a slow drying medium, and your embossing powders. Some nice-to-have heat embossing supplies include stamps, and it doesn't much matter whether you're using uh, rubber stamps, acrylic stamps, even foam stamps, and also templates, or also sometimes referred to as stencils, like some of these that you see here. So optional embossing supplies include a non-stick craft mat. This is from Ranger, and it will withstand temperatures of, I believe, it's up to between six to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. An anti-static bag, you can see what that looks like here. Some coffee filters, some paint brushes in a couple different sizes, and a little craft knife here. Now, although I refer to these as optional supplies, I do use these pretty much every time I emboss. So they're supplies that I would definitely recommend. So let's look a little bit more at the heat tool. 
The heat tool is often also referred to as an embossing tool or embossing gun or a heat gun, and it's a special type of tool that's specifically created for embossing. There are many different types of heat tools on the market, this is just a sampling, made by many different manufacturers, but they all have similar properties. They heat to a very high temperature and they provide a directed narrow stream of heat with minimal air pressure. Now a heat tool is not the same thing as a hair dryer. You cannot use a hair dryer as a heat tool because the force of the air coming out of the hair dryer will simply blow your embossing powder all over the place rather than melting and fusing it, which is the process you need in order to achieve that beautiful raised effect. So now the second must-have supply that I mentioned was a slow drying medium. And here I just want to demonstrate why you need some kind of a slow drying medium. Now embossing powder is dry. So on its own it's not going to stick to your surface. Here you can see I have just a plain piece of paper, nothing's been added to it. If I take my embossing powder and I sprinkle it over that surface, and then I just tilt my paper, you can see how all the embossing powder has come off. If I were to have applied my heat tool to that, it would have just blown my powder all over the place. So in order to emboss, regardless of what surface you're using, it's essential to have some kind of a slow drying medium to which your embossing powder can stick to. The most commonly known and used slow drying mediums include things like pigment inks, and pigment inks typically come in a whole rainbow of different colors. Um, there's also things called watermark resist pads or Versamark pads, which is just, well this one's kind of messy, but the natural color of it is this cream color. There's no color to it, but it's just a very thick, sticky ink. There's inks that are specifically created for embossing, such as this Distress embossing ink, which can be either no color or clear, or sometimes they can come with a tint. Now these come in either pad form or they come in pen form, and which one you choose really depends on what kind of an effect you're going for. If you're working with a clear embossing powder because you want the color of your ink to show through, then you would choose a pigment ink pad. Um, if you don't have a whole bunch of different colors, but you have colored embossing powders, then choosing a um, plain no color transparent embossing ink is a perfect choice and again as I mentioned you can do this either in pad form or you can do it in pen form. Now if you're an altered artist or mixed media artist and you don't own any of these types of ink pads or pens I've also had great success embossing with things like gesso, acrylic paints as well as the gel mediums that I use in mixed media work. So there's really a whole array that you can choose from and if you have some kind of a medium and you're not sure if it's going to work for embossing before you run out and buy one of these suggested mediums I'd encourage you to try it and test it out and see if it's going to work for you. So the last thing we're going to look at in this segment of our basics of heat embossing video are embossing powders themselves. Now there's such a huge array of embossing powders that we're going to talk about these in more detail in separate videos. In a nutshell though, embossing powders are available in a wide range of finishes including gloss, semi-gloss, sometimes referred to as semi-matte or semi-dull, matte or dull. You can also get pearlescent finishes, metallic, glittered, puff, glow in the dark, just to name a few. Embossing powders can be clear, they can be semi-transparent or sometimes called semi-opaque and opaque and that refers to your ability to see the color of the surface or medium that's used underneath the embossing powder. And embossing powders also come in a huge range of colors and even blends of colors. Now all of these blends and colors and finishes can be sold in several different grain sizes. Everything from extra fine or ultra fine, which is sometimes also called detail, all the way up to coarse, which is also referred to as ultra high, ultra thick, or enamel. So that gives you a good overview of what heat embossing is, what heat embossing is used for, what kind of projects you can do with it, what kind of surfaces you can heat emboss on, and then the basic supplies that you're going to need if you want to get started in heat embossing. Now in part two of our basics of heat embossing video, I'm going to take a look at and show you how you actually heat emboss and share some tips along the way.